So, um, so let me uh, approach this, uh, take a little bit of a running start to approach this and start by saying that, at least from my perspective, there's absolutely nothing inconsistent between what Travis is advocating for and what Glenn is advocating for. Um, in, in the same way that um, you protect your house from burglary by locking the doors and having a burglar alarm, but you also rely on the police to be patrolling around the block, to be, to be conducting criminal intelligence activities. I think we need the same approach here. Um, there's no question that the private sector needs to be more engaged, but I think that the, the government provides capabilities that no one else has. And, and with due respect, I, I disagree that the NSA is only useful against large nation state attacks. Um, speaking hypothetically here, because I, I have had access to classified information in the past, one could imagine that there are a couple of ways that NSA could get information about potential attacks. One of them is by sitting on foreign networks and watching the communications that foreign actors are having and learning what their plan is. But the other is to be sitting on US networks. Uh, I am confident that NSA has signatures for thousands of, uh, at, of uh, attack vectors um, and watching for those as they come in. And that's the part that I think presents the interesting legal issue, which is you can, you can imagine that it would be a contributor to cybersecurity. It might not be the panacea, but it would be a contributor if NSA were sitting on networks all over the United States, looking at all the traffic in and out and looking for these threat vectors. And the question that Charlie adverted to is, is that, it, does that violate the Fourth Amendment? Um, and there, there are arguments both ways on this and it's not settled yet. Um, one can argue that if all you do is you have automated processes and no human being ever sees anything except under the circumstance where it pops up as, as being malware, there's really no invasion of privacy that invokes the, the Fourth Amendment. Uh, that's, uh, I will confess, that's a position that I've advocated in the past, in, among other things in an article in the uh, Yale Law Journal online uh, about half a dozen years ago. The other argument, uh, which has been made, for example, in litigation uh, in, the, in California about uh, the NSA's uh, PRISM and upstream surveillance programs, um, the other argument is that it is a search anytime the government is through whatever means essentially scanning the content of all communication. Um, we know right now that the Fourth Amendment is in a bit of flux. Um, thanks to the Carpenter decision, which on one reading of it sort of upends the traditional view of what is and is not a search. Um, but I think that to the extent we want to make use of these um, uh, probably best in world capabilities that NSA has, we're going to have to work through that legal issue. 